Just Barely Things has been launching a debate a couple of days ago. About five days ago, she says, yes, you're less attractive at 35 than at 25 as a woman. This used to be common sense 50 years ago. I mean, this is such a basic talking point. It's amazing the fallacious responses that Pearly Things is receiving for this. And today I've titled my show Female Frontest Sparks the 25-35 Debate. I want to be clear, it was a joke. I don't consider that Just Pearly Things is a female frontest. But I was laughing my ass off at the New York Post article that says that she is the female and rotate. So I was like, how, how could I go further? At first, I wanted to call her female Hitler, but uh, female Hitler would have been too edgy. So I decided to go for female Fuentes. She has a lot of women comparing themselves at 35 to her at 25, which is not the point. The point is you get worse from 25 to 35 in terms of the age uh, acting on your appearance and on your value on the sexual market. That is the point of just party things. The point is not all possible 35 years old are all uglier than all possible 25 years old. That is not the point. So this girl is like, oh, yeah, look at how good I look compared to you. And I'm in my 30s and you're in your 25th. Now, of course, people take the worst possible picture of just party thing and they take the best possible pictures of themselves to make this comparison. One feature that I notice on all these women posting their I'm sexy at 35 picture they are covered in makeup. They are covered in makeup. That is not the natural look of a human face. It's not even a filter. This is makeup and filter. Or makeup, uh, plenty of layers of makeup. Uh, the thing is, this makeup lady makes the point. This makeup seeks to emulate the skin of a younger woman. <laughs> So if your point is, oh, I still look good in my 30s. Yeah, you look good because you wear a cardboard of plastic and powder substances that are meant to emulate what a 25-year-old looks like. So absolutely modded, modified, and that therefore is not an argument. Uh, Carrie Smith was saying, I wasn't familiar with pearly things until this tweet went viral, along with a lot of reactions to it. Still not that familiar with her, but read through what she's saying. Read through what she's saying. I think a lot of women are missing the point that she's talking about generalities and bell curves. Well, yeah, obviously, but still, even if it was in the specific. Uh, in the specific, it is still a truth that 25 years old are more attractive. By the way, how is it that we have females discussing this? Because how attractive you're, you are will be depending on the male cognition. We decide what's attractive. What does attracted mean? At, unless you're talking about gravity, if you're talking about love, it's about how desirable are you for a man? And so you, you have no clue. You're, you're going to give very bad advice or you're going to get very bad advice if you listen to females on this question. The, the, the experts of the attractiveness of women are males, by definition, by default, by nature. Maybe they personally are more attractive now than in their 20s because they're taking care of themselves better now in different ways. Yeah, uh, one of these, uh, one of these uh, women posted a picture of herself being fat at 25 and herself not being fat at 35. <laughs> okay, maybe you're the one female that has lost weight between 25 and 35, but 99% of the females will be higher weight at 35 than they are at 25 because 
99% of them will have gone through pregnancy, or even if they don't, they will have accumulated more fat. So it's, it's not a good point to say, oh, well, I'm the exception to your rule. But it doesn't disprove the generality that she's speaking of, and more importantly, why would we want young girls to keep buying into the lie feminism sold us that we can all delay marriage and kids forever and have it all, etc. I'm in my 40s. I bought into a lot of social justice brand of feminist lies in my 20s and early 30s. I know a lot of us who did. I know a lot of women who now want kids and are struggling, struggling with mourning. Pearl hasn't lived all those mistakes I did. She's young. I don't know if she's sincere or not, but I'll assume she is until I have a reason to believe otherwise. I've thought a lot about things I wish I could tell my younger self, myths I wish I could have dispelled earlier. Modern culture sells women promiscuity, narcissism, artifice, resentment, and vanity plus a lot of delusions about life, biology, love, marriage. Marriage has been devalued to the point where people don't really think about the vow they are making before God. They think about all the other unimportant things first, and people leave marriage like it wasn't a vow. Again, I'm speaking of society and myself. Hard lessons I learned because I am older and chose to learn about life the hard way. Well, yeah, I agree generally with this uh, comment. Absolutely correct. And some people, like the Reddit Libertarian, have absolutely irrelevant commentary. 25 versus 35 debate. Biologically, straight men find fertility attractive. Yes, but it's not just fertility. I want to precise this. This is why I tweeted about this today. It's about the potential for chains of baby to be created. Because if you interpret fertility as, can I have a baby now? You're going to be deceived into thinking that fertility is roughly the same for a 30-year-old versus a 27-year-old. But the 30-year-old, 31-year-old, can maybe give you two babies. The 27 years old has a chance to give you four, five babies. And it's not due to the statistical nature of, can I have a baby now? That would be fertility as most people define it. Think of fertility as, what is my window of hope in the best case scenario? In the best case scenario, if I get with a 20-year-old, my window of hope is to have 14 babies, you know? And there's no way I can get 14 babies with a 30-year-old. We need a different world, word than fertility to capture this reality because the red-eyed libertarian is confused. She says, and that's okay. Women, however, can be fertile well into their 50s. <laughs> Not in a way that is promising of the potential for 15 babies. Maybe in the way that with science, maybe with a frozen egg, maybe if you're lucky that the frozen egg wasn't totally wrecked, maybe if that person is extremely healthy, maybe you're going to have a baby if you're extremely lucky on all this chain of probabilities that are against you. And maybe science can make it so that a 50-year-old somehow carries a baby through this probabilistic mess. But there is no way a 50-year-old offers me the same hope for a lineage of 14 babies that a 20-year-old can offer to me. And 35 is still considered typical childbearing age. No, it is not considered typical childbearing age. It is considered the limit at which we start calling it uh, geriatric pregnancy. So at 35, you are in a geriatric pregnancy. It's, it's like taking the limit and calling it the normality is absolutely n not correct. Uh, not even by the standard of woke feminist medicine. 
at 35, you are starting the part of your life where you will be having a geriatric pregnancy. It is not normality at 35. Normality is between 20 and 30 by the standard of the max fertility of women. These women continue emitting pheromones, producing estrogen, and looking youthful because of their biology. Uh, maybe these some women are exceptions, but don't don't make a policy out of the exception. Why, why do women always bring up exceptions in debates? It's like this reminds me when I was going to educate children about the brain, and you know, elementary school children. And they would all want to talk about the exception in their family. Like, yeah, but my aunt, uh, she sees ghosts. And it's like, okay. Like, like, JF, can you imagine JF in an elementary school? <laughs> Here, let's learn about science, kids. My aunt, she says that she sees ghosts. Your aunt is deluded, young child. I'm here to talk to you about the real thing. Now, I don't know why is it, but uh, there are some people who think that bringing up an exception uh, is, is an argument in a philosophical debate. Lou Pasteur Ephra says, JF, I have always thought slash understood that a species having children later in life essentially selects for better reproductive genetics i.e. if a woman can have successful children at 50, she should because those are some damned good genes. Do you agree? Uh, no, uh, no, because he here's your strategy could work if the whole species was converging in that direction. But for the whole species to be converging in that direction, you need an environment in which it is truly advantageous to extend uh, the non-reproductive part of life. Now, if you think of humanity 7 million years ago detaching itself from the ape branch, well, staying in the ape branch, but detaching itself from whatever ape ancestors we had then, perhaps in these moments there were an extension because Perhaps it was the case that there was so much things to learn about human survival that a longer and longer childhood was desirable from a learning perspective, learning how to survive so that you can be safely making your own children. But if your entire species is not converging toward that direction, you are getting evolutionarily outcompeted. You know why? Because exponential increase is radically more efficient when you have more exponential jump, more quantified, quantized jumps of exponents. Let me illustrate by an example. If you make two, exponent two, exponent two, exponent two, exponent two. You increase from 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. That, that's, that's your line of descent at a rate of reproduction of 2. So a couple of generations down the line, you have 32 descendants, 64, 128. But imagine, imagine that a population makes baby while you make your babies at 35, 40, another population makes them at 20. <clears throat> now, what, while you do 2, exponent 2, exponent 2, while you do it 4 times, they do it 8 times. Now, let's do it. On your side, 2, exponent 2, 4. On their side, 2, exponent 2, exponent 2, 8. Now... You get to 8, they get to 32. You get to 16, they get to 128. You get to 32, they get to 512. You get to 64, they get to 2048. 
you see how if you can just squeeze your reproduction strategy on the 20 year old you can dominate planet earth so uh be careful with this strategy good genes good genes for what good genes for extending life for arbitrary extending the life of a supra minor minority of a super minority of planet earth what are you gonna do uh with extended life what, what are you gonna do that's so amazing at 60 70 80 years old nothing you're gonna get outcompeted by muslim families who marry at 20 and they make chains of baby until they die DK Shadow says, yep, an exponential function looks like a linear function in the beginning, and then it takes off. Yeah, and it didn't take many generations before we had 64 descendants on one side. We had 2,048 on the other side. This is, it's unbelievable. Uh, I wouldn't put a hard, age cap, a hard age cap on beauty because much of it also has to do with health and lifestyle no 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 health and lifestyle and and extending your youthness looking deceptive display through uh through old age is a deceptive signal yes you can mimic you can mimic youthfulness with makeup training health physiology whatever trick you have but the reality of beauty is that beauty exists to serve one purpose, to direct the male toward the right behavior to maintain his genetic line. And the right behavior is not to fuck a super youthful, sexy looking 60 years old. All right? Because of the mathematics I just laid out, I laid out clearly enough, I hope everyone understands Fertility is not about whether you can have a baby now or whether it's theoretically possible to have one. Fertility is about how early are you in the exponential function of human domination. And the answer is as early as possible for the human body should be your target. You could be 25 and look rough because of drugs and alcohol. You could be overweight or have a hormonal imbalance, all of which would affect fertility. And in many such cases, a healthy 35-year-old might look, might look more beautiful than an unhealthy 25-year-old. Beauty isn't hardline measured by age, but by health, especially today when, let's be honest, so many women are physically unhealthy, overweight, and mentally ill. This is this is not addressing anything that Pearl has said. Because, oh, yeah, but there are different women. Yeah, yeah, but her point is, take a woman. At 25, she is more desirable than at 35. And that is just the truth, the evolutionary truth. And no one has mentioned that, oh, well, it, it can apply across different women of different weight. No, no, but for a given woman, you're going to have more evolutionary success having reproductive sex with her at 25 than at 35. Please stop with this fertility misunderstanding. You all look very stupid.